Welcome to the Busy to Balance podcast. I am your host, Jamie Zweer, and I'm the founder of Oh How Healthy. This podcast is all about how to show you, the overworked, overwhelmed, and occasionally unhealthy woman, how to find health and balance in all different areas of your life. I will share with you digestible, bite-sized bits of info on everything from balancing a healthy plate to keeping a healthy home and everything in between. Now listen, I know that you are busy and that is why I will keep these episodes short, sweet, and to the point. Now let's dive into today's episode. Hey ladies, I hope you all are having a great day or night or morning or afternoon, whatever time of day you listen to my episode. Um, Either way, I'm so grateful that you all are here. And I wanted to uh, create an episode about how to motivate yourself to complete your to-do list. So I know how frustrating it could be to try to complete that to-do list day after day. So you have a million and one different things on your to-do list, whether it's a home task, a work task, a self-care task, a family task, you have a lot going on. So it can be extremely difficult to get yourself motivated and focus enough to actually do the work that needs to get done in the amount of time that you have to do it. And when you do get the things done on your to-do list in the amount of time that you allotted, all is great. You feel like superwoman. You're like, I can do anything now. But when you don't, you kind of feel like crap about yourself and those items on your to-do list just get pushed back to the next day and then so on and so forth. So the problem arises when you create this long, ambitious list of things to do, but don't really know where to start when it comes to getting the things done or when to find the time to get the things done. Because this this was me, guys. I used to create these long, ambitious, hundred lo- hundred long item lists of things to do, and then I sit down. And I'm like, oh, what the hell? <laughs> Where do I even start? And I don't want you to do that. I want to show you the way that really worked for me. Because without really finding a system. There was no way I was able to find, would be able to find the time to start a podcast or create a Facebook group or do these additional things that I'm doing now. So I'm going to share with you four tips that I find are super helpful to get myself motivated and get work done. My first tip is to decide whether you're a morning person or an evening person. And I want you to find what time of day works best for you to work. This is when you need to schedule the bulk of your work. So if you're a morning person and you find that you do your best work and you're freshest in the morning, you need to schedule time to complete your to-do list in the morning. This can be a weekday morning or a weekend morning. And if you're an evening person and you feel like you can do your best work when you are relaxed after the end of the day and you can, you're maybe a little bit of a night owl, you want to schedule the bulk of your things to do then. So you just need to find what works best for you. And you may have already kind of established whether you're a morning person or a night person and do something else during this time. For example, you might be a morning person and realize this is the best time to fit in your workouts. And if that's the case, either A, you have to wake up even earlier than you do to get your workouts in to complete items on your to-do list, or B, push the gym back until the evening if you know that you're going to get it done anyway and make sure that you put your important items in the morning instead of the workout. But if you find that you might not trust yourself to get to the gym after work and just working out in the morning is just works best for you, then you really need to go with option A and wake up even earlier and set your alarm even earlier to get things done you may feel more energized by doing this because you're actually creating confidence and doing things that you need to do and creating balance in other areas of your life. And you know, if you're doing this work early, early in the morning, then try to get to bed earlier at night. Or if you're spending more time at night 
getting these things done. Try to find time to get your husband to wake up the kids or spend less time getting ready in the morning. Something like that. You need to just find what works for you and will get you the best results. And you want to find things that will motivate you during these times of swapping one habit for another. So you can maybe change the alarm tone on your alarm clock to a nice either relaxing sound or a motivating song that will get you up and out of bed. You can change the background on your phone to something that is motivating to you, whether it's a quote or an image, or put your phone on the other side of the room so that you're forced to actually get up and get out of bed instead of pressing snooze on your alarm clock to shut the alarm off. That's a fun little tip that I use. Or you can tell yourself once you complete this goal and wake up early two days this week or three days this week, is tell yourself you can buy yourself something or, you know, get a massage that you've been waiting to, to get and you've been pushing off and pushing off. And this is what the girls in my Facebook group do every single week. They share what their goals are, what their weekly goals are, and then what they will give themselves and what they will treat themselves with once they complete their goal. And we're all there to cheer each other on and offer up motivation and accountability. So if that is something that you want to join, the link will be in my show notes so that you can hop on into that free Facebook group. My second tip is to listen to yourself and your body, but only to a certain extent. Because yes, I want you to listen to your body when it's hungry or when it's tired or when it's thirsty or when you need to get a workout in or when you need to get more rest. But I don't want you to confuse that with resistance and procrastination. Because resistance and procrastination will try to sneak up on you and you must fight through it. You have to distinguish and figure out whether you're actually really tired or it's just procrastination. But so that you can analyze, you can say, you know what? I chose a time of day that works best for me. So I might be a little bit sleepy, but chances are I'm not exhausted and depriving myself of sleep. And I just ate something. So it's not like I'm hungry and I'm feeling fine. So you really need to tap into your body and notice how resistance sneaks up on you. It will try to tell you you need to go fold that pile of clothes that's sitting there on the bed or that you need to go let the dog out or you need to go, you know, call your mom. Just jot it down, know you'll get to it later and focus on the tasks at hand. And I want you to know that the amount of resistance that you feel towards something is equivalent to the amount of success waiting for you on the other side. So what I mean by this is let's say that you have a great idea. You've you've seen this on Pinterest, you've seen a new whiteboard family calendar system, and you just know that it's a great idea. You know your, your husband and your family will love it and it will make chores and routines a million times easier for you guys. But for some reason, you can't get around to putting it into action. And the days and the weeks and the months go by and you never actually took any steps forward towards implementing this new system. So for sure, you must have been able to find at least a few hours in those in the last few months to put this new idea into action. But there was just huge resistance around implementing it for some reason. And why? And I'm letting you know that what that is, is called resistance. And it is a, probably the worst feeling. Um, it's the hardest thing that you'll really ever have to encounter when you're trying to create new habits or new routines or new systems in your life. And I personally believe that fighting through your own limitations and resistance is the hardest thing that you'll ever have to do. But just know you can do it. 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 So I want you to tune in and listen to your body when it's feeling sick, tired, etc. But please don't give it too much slack when it's trying to resist you from sitting your booty down and getting some much needed tasks done. There's a book that I read called The War of Art and it's by Stephen Pressfield. And he talks a lot about resistance and how it tries to sneak up on you and how to fight through it. So I will leave the link to that book in my show notes and you can uh, read more about it if you're interested. So my third tip is to avoid distractions. You got to put the phone away. You got to put it on airplane mode. You have to put it in a drawer on the other side of the room. You got to get it out of sight. I just shared a post about this recently that 
I found that I was really being distracted by my phone, uh, whether it was answering te- text messages or responding to emails or answering phone calls. I was just getting distracted by it. And there's a time and a place for the phone, and but it wasn't during times when I was trying to complete important tasks. I knew that I had a limited amount of time to do a certain task, and I had to only focus on that. And whether it's two minutes answering a phone call saying, I can't really talk now, or five minutes responding to that email, it was still time being sucked up and taken away from the most important tasks at hand. And it kind of can be hard to see what is really stopping you or holding you back from getting your work done. It may be you find yourself getting distracted by clothes or your phone. And if you find that your house is a distraction, if you find that Every time you go to sit down, you can't even focus because your office is a mess or there's dishes piling up and someone is calling you or knocking on your door and trying to come over and you just can't get anything done because there's way too many distractions in your house. Then at that point, you need to like pack up your stuff and you know take your work to a coffee shop or a library. You got to just really uh, find systems and routines that will work best for you. And you got to analyze what your unique situation is. And that is exactly what I do as a health coach. I kind of help you see through that and see kind of what's going on because it can be hard to figure that out for yourself. It was really hard. I had to dive in deep and really figure out what was causing my lack of time and what was causing me to not complete tasks that needed to get done on my own to do this. And I had to get honest with myself and realize that it was the phone that was taking up a lot of my attention, but I was convincing myself that I needed to be on the phone at that time. I absolutely needed to be on the phone. I was doing work on the phone. I was answering comments on social media. I was responding to people and that's work. So I I was kind of like counting it out as it wasn't like I was aimlessly scrolling or doing unimportant things. Like they were all important things. But I had to realize that by doing that important thing, I was not doing something else. So you really have to dive in deep. And if you're interested in me analyzing your current situation and seeing what you can do to best maximize your time and see what system or routine will work best for you, you can always apply for a complimentary consultation with me. And that is a link that I will leave in the show notes as well. And my fourth and final tip is to keep your daily to-do list simple. Please keep it simple. I cannot emphasize this enough. If you have an overwhelming to-do list, you're going to think of anything and everything to avoid doing it. You're going to be like, oh, hell no, I'm not going to that list. I am not. uh Uh-uh. I know how long that thing is. And you're going to think of anything. Uh, I think I need to call my grandma. Uh, I think I should take my dog for a walk. Just keep the list simple so that you know, okay, let me just quickly finish these three things and then I can go ahead and take the dog for a walk. And then I can go ahead and you'll feel so much better. And I also know that you like the idea of multitasking, but it is not the best thing to do when you're trying to be the most productive because You are doing a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit over there, a little bit over here, and you're not really getting anything done. You may be making a small amount of progress on each task, but not getting anything done. And the whole point of creating the to-do list is to cross the thing out and get it done. So please just focus on one thing at a time and then move on to the next. I like to just recommend you stick to three to five things max on that to-do list. If you can get to more things, great, but focus on those three things and, and then you'll be good. And then also this creates confidence in yourself. You then know I should not be afraid of my to-do list. I can do it. So when I have a new list of three things to do tomorrow, I know I'll be able to crush that list. And make sure you don't put things on your list like shower, get ready, pack lunch. Make sure that there are things that you know you won't do unless you wrote them down and you're actually scheduling time to do it because you're going to get in the shower and get ready and pack lunch anyway. So don't put that kind of stuff on your list. Um, Make sure that there are things that 
or outside of your tasks that you must get done. Like you must shower so you're not the smelly person at work. You must pack your lunch, otherwise you're going to starve. So make sure those things on the list are critical. There are other tips that I want to share with you, but I want you to get these basic tips down. And I will be sure to create a part two of this episode so that I can elaborate further on other things that need to get done in order to complete your to-do list. But these are four of the most important things that you need to focus on first. To review, tip one is decide what time of day works best for you and do your best work then. Celebrate your wins, do things daily to motivate yourself. Step two is to fight resistance with all of your might. The success, freedom, and abundance is waiting for you just on the other side. So please push through that. And if you want more support in that area, feel free to join my free Facebook group. The third tip is to avoid any and all distractions. Put your phone on airplane mode, work somewhere out of the ordinary, somewhere where you won't be distracted by the pile of clothes or someone knocking on your door. And step four is to keep that list simple. Focus on three to five things max on that to-do list every single day. So if you follow these four tips, you will be sure to find motivation to complete your to-do list for once and for all. So if you want to connect with me, you can find me on Instagram at ohowhealthy. Uh, My website is ohowhealthy.com and you can find me on Facebook. And if you love this podcast, it would mean so much to me if you left me a rating or review and let me know what you thought of it. What was your favorite part? What was your biggest takeaway? You can also uh, screenshot this podcast and tag me in it on Instagram and let me know what you thought and have the best day, night, afternoon, whatever time of day that you listen to this episode. And I will be connecting with you all again soon.